All right, bulk day five. Today is back and biceps, and uh, yeah, had a little bit of a hiccup. Didn't get a video out yesterday, which is what I was aiming on doing, but not the end of the world. Uh, I was very busy. There was fraternity things that were going on, um, and I had to be at an event, and I also had a test yesterday, so didn't have a whole lot of time. I did film, I just didn't have time to process and upload things. It is currently cold. It's really cold right now. It's like 55, I think, right here. It's like cloudy and kind of grimy, so good day to like put yourself in the basement of a gym and just like grind a hard ass workout for two and a half, three hours, which is what I fully plan on doing. It's currently six o'clock, so it's a little late, but took caffeine, um, full amount. So probably gonna be staying up a little bit late tonight. This would be good just to knock out some homework and stuff because I've fallen behind a little bit on my chemistry, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, in terms of plan for the workout, uh, today back, like I mentioned, it is week four of six of my meso, which means that I have, I think like four sets of a lat bias movement and then four sets, yep, that's right, four sets of a lat bias movement, four sets of a uh, rhomboid and mid slash upper back movement. So like four vo vertical pulling movements and then four horizontal pulling movements. Um, so that shouldn't be too bad. I think for vertical pull, what I'll plan to be planning on doing is I'll do two sets of a regular lat pull down. Actually, I might play around with a variation of an assisted pull up. Um, while I'll use like D handles to change like the angle so I can make it a little bit more lat bias. I've done that one time in the past and it's given me a really good lat pump. So I might actually do that this workout um, or just go with like regular pronated grip. Uh, and, uh, and then I'll probably do two sets of single arm, single arm, uh, I don't know what you would call it, like single arm, row not it's not a row it's a single arm what the hell is it called man I keep forgetting the name of the fibers it's like your lower lat the i made a reel where i was making fun of people that used it but i don't know it's like the, you'll see in the video where it's like the one that you, you your arm goes up to like this angle and then you come here uh probably do two sets of those at the end and then do four sets of uh heavy t-bar rows um and that'll be back and then biceps all got like I like 16 sets of biceps so like eight in all so i'll probably do some honestly like for biceps i kind of just do whatever feels good so normally that means a lot of like supinated grip stuff but i might also play around with like hammer curls um and maybe even pronated stuff for like my uh for my brachial radialis uh, cause I'm also trying to grow that as well. And then for rear delts, which comes afterwards, I'll probably do either reverse pec deck stuff, um, or I'll do, uh, 45 degree angle, like, like reverse cable flat, like I'll, you'll, you'll see, um, so I'll do those and then and that'll be it and then I hit abs yesterday and then that was good so I'll do that that'll be it but uh yeah man um I don't really got much else to say so I'm just gonna try and get into the workout and uh get back to it all right <clears throat> about to do my first set of assisted pull-ups here uh which I will film but before I do that I had a I guess what you would call a shower thought if any of you guys know what that is, but obviously I didn't have it in the shower. I had it when I was on my way over here, but I just thought I would share. So I think one observation that I made, just for context, is Saturday night, and the gym is a lot more empty than it usually is. And I mean, earlier today we had a football game. Right before that was Friday night. People were all out and partying and doing all the things that you know college kids normally do and i'm not gonna sit here pretend like i wasn't doing it either i definitely was going out partying but one thing i do want to make a distinguish 
I, one thing I do want to distinguish is the difference between, I guess, like having a good time um, with an alcohol versus having a good time without alcohol. Because I think that it is 100% possible, at least in my experience, to have a really good time without alcohol. And in some ways, I think that it actually allows you to have a good time for longer. Like, you know, if you want to go out and you want to go dance somewhere, um, I think being able to do that while sober versus being on a lot of alcohol allows you to do it for a long period of time because obviously with alcohol, like, you can sometimes like, black out or go too far and you have to be more cognizant of that when it's hard to do if you're under the influence of a drug anyway uh, because alcohol at the end of the day is a drug. Um, the other thing too I think that is interesting about alcohol and I wanted to point out in this little conversation that we're having right now is that I think alcohol takes away some of the enjoyment or, or some of the people's natural proclivity to seek out novelty in their life as a whole. Like I think that a lot of people find enjoyment and get like an internal sense of happiness from doing things that are hard, but also doing things that are hard that are also new experiences. Like going and climbing a mountain is incredibly rewarding for somebody because it's hard, but it's also something new, like a new view you haven't seen before, a new activity you haven't tried before, something new. And I think that what happens when people have a fun time and they add like any substance to it that artificially raises the dopaminergic effects of that experience beyond what they normally would be, I think that it takes away your want to go seek something out that is more that is more like nuanced or more uh, interesting. And I think that that's a good thing. I think that being unsatisfied with going out to bars over and over again with your friends because it's just you guys are doing the same thing, at least because like I don't drink. One thing that I've noticed is that I have a lot less of a tolerance for staying in the same place and experiencing the same things as other people. Like I like to party, I like to do, I like to have fun. But like I'm not the kind of guy that just likes to go out to a bar every single you know like weekend and that's like my form of fun. So like I actually wanted to go like do something different and like go experience new things and I think that like that's a nat like that's the way that it should be. I think that that's like homeostasis. That's where you should be. Like if your natural want to go explore new things should be here, alcohol makes it here. So I think that that's because alcohol at the end of the day, like it, it's like instant gratification of any kind, kind of decreases your proclivity to go explore, which I think is a net negative. So and it can have a negative impact on your life because if if we're naturally designed to want to seek that out. Um, by not kind of following our natural rhythms in regards to that, I think that it can have a negative impact on our mental health. So that's my little rant here. I'll get to the actual set now, but hopefully that made sense for somebody um, if they ended up watching this, but I just thought I'd put that out there. All right, about to do the second set of these. Gonna go for around 12 reps, I think. Um, I did one set with two plates and two tens on each side. Hit that for 10, so that's a PR. So I'm just gonna try and hit this for 12 and get progress on volume, so get right into it. Thank you. 
Last set of these, I'm gonna do slow and controlled, focus on weighted stretch. Um, keeping, like one of the cues that I could get for these is just keeping your elbows up because when you keep your elbows up, you hold back, you get more of a trap in mid back, which is where it's supposed to be, rather than like if you try to keep your elbows tucked, you're gonna hit more lat and then your belt as well. So I'm trying to focus mainly on trap, just because, and I'll do shrugs at the end so you'll see too, uh, just because. Uh, I hit rear deltas in isolation, so I'll get to focus. Those curls in particular, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to be in a position to where I have tension pretty much throughout the entirety of the movement because with curls when you're using dumbbells instead of cables, um, at the, the top of the movement, you tension is lost just because of like how torque works. Obviously like when you're in the middle, because the weight is here, the torque is the greatest when you're at 90 degrees from or when you're parallel to the ground, which means that the majority of the tension is going to be there. Um, so in order to try and combat that, I'm going to lean forward and lean back throughout the movement to try and change how the torque affects the movement, just to try and get tension throughout the entire movement. Even. So that's kind of the mentality behind those. And in terms of 
like not using dumbbells, using a, I guess this would be considered like a barbell. Um, it's just doing that just because, uh, it's kind of like what I felt like, honestly. So it just goes to show like doing what you feel like instead of what is optimal. When you keep preaching, that's probably the best way to look to do the things that you enjoy. Because most of the time they coincide with what your body needs anyway. So it's kind of the thought process behind that. Hopefully that helps. All right, on to the last exercise, rear delts. So, these I'm doing high volume, relatively low rest in between sets. I'm doing these 45 degree angle things I was talking about earlier, so you'll actually get to see what I mean because I can't articulate shit. Um, but here we are. I'm gonna try and speed through these because I'm trying to get out of the gym, go eat, and then go do homework because tomorrow I'm trying to go. I have legs and I'm also trying to go hiking, so gotta manage time, but. Yeah, get these filmed and get ready to go and then talk on the way back. Alright, it is currently dark out. It's about, I think, 9.15, 9.30ish. Just got done with the back day. Turned out to be a pretty gnarly back day, and I think a large reason for that is just because I had an obscene amount of carbohydrates before I went to the gym, which there's definitely something to be said about that. Um, I had, like, two bowls of cereal with milk, and then a piece of literal, like, blueberry pie with uh, ice cream, and I had that before I went to the gym. So it's definitely loaded on carbs there, which helps a lot with just like pump and strength and all that shit. So I'll talk about nutrition a little bit on this walk back because I think that there's something to be said about that. So currently being in college, like I'm eating everything according to like dining core and meal swipes and stuff like that. And in high school, I was super regimented where I like every, every meal was like literally measured out with a food scale. And right now I'm like not having to do that. Like I can't like... I. I mean, I could do that, but it's just such a inconvenience with my time that like, I just don't. And uh, I think that, um, I think that the biggest thing for me, cause I would say like thus far, this has probably been the most successful bulk I've had just because last bulk I got super like, I was at 206 and right now I'm at 190. Um, but peak cut, I was 182. So I've definitely put on like rebounded some like water weight and, and obviously some fat, but like in terms of the speed of the bulk, um, it's a lot more contained to what it was last year. And although my last bulk last year was definitely very successful, um, like I got to 206, hit 315 pound bench, hit a bunch of like PRs and stuff, competed in powerlifting meat. I just put on so much, especially preparing for the meat, I put on so much unnecessary fat that it really stalled my progress in terms of trying to get as lean as I wanted to during my cut. And to be honest with you, I didn't get as lean as I wanted to during the cut, but I know that like going forward, at least with that cut, it wasn't as lean as I wanted to get. I didn't get leaner than I was the previous summer, but I did get to a point of leanness where I had a good point where I could like still had a lot of leeway to go in terms of body weight that I could put on before getting to a point where I'm like already kind of peaked out and like have to cut again. Um, and definitely like, I mean, I'm at 190 right now and I plan on staying at 190 until the end of this mezzo and then evaluating the physique just like eye wise, just like morning, you know, like in the morning when I'm like depleted and stuff like that, or like even like with a pump, just like seeing like evaluating, okay, like how much body fat have I put on? Does it make sense to do a mini cut right now to kind of potentiate more like bulk? Um, and I might do that or like, I think the plan right now is I'm probably gonna bulk, I'm gonna do this mezzo um finish it out end at 190 and then do another six week mezzo and then get up to 195 so it's less than a pound a week of weight gain which is really which is pretty much like right where you want to be for bulks uh, at least in my body weight because it has to do with like percentage um 
So obviously like if you're a 150, if you're like lighter, you have to put on even less weight a week, but a little bit less than a pound a week tends to be the best just for me and my goals and like what body weight I'm trying to get to. So I think the game plan is do this meso, end at 190, next meso, get to 195. And then at that point, after a good like 14 week bulk, like consistent, like lean bulk, I'll do a mini cut for like four or five weeks and try and lose like eight pounds, two pounds a week, really aggressive. But uh, this is just to potentiate uh, another massing phase and just kind of resensitize my body, get rid of some excess fatigue that has built up and just like let my joints and everything just kind of like chill out because training intensity during this kind of a mini cut also decreases as well. So you're really just kind of like laying back, but also pulling the food away, letting insulin sensitivity come back to normal, letting your joints and all the fatigue come back to normal. So then you could potentiate another massing phase. And in terms of like natural versus enhanced people, um, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, it's like what I'm doing right now in terms of like mini cut is what people do during a health phase when they're like, when they are properly doing like steroids and stuff for like comp like competitive use and stuff like that, like where they have their health phases and then they, they hop off the sauce, they chill out on the training. They're still going to the gym and training like, but kind of like half ass, but that's okay. That's like the purpose of it. And then also the food comes down too, just to let like insulin and all that stuff like kind of resensitize. So in terms of plans, I think that's gonna be the upcoming plan for the next couple of weeks. Coming back up to the dorm here, so I'm gonna end it here. But I hope everybody learned something from this and can go 100% with their training. So yeah.